everyone. As you'll see, I'm not orally. So um, we've just gate crashed her session. We thought we'd come up as moral support. Um, so um, welcome to our talk, which is very different from some of the sessions already in that we're probably not going to tell you anything particularly useful and it's just like a plea for help. So in comparison to some of the people who've been up and talking, that's where we want to be. Um, so the other thing you'll notice is there's lots of really tenuous um, analogies in this, connections with soil and growth, and that's because we're from the Royal Agricultural University and we like to try and sort of, uh, sort of add in anything we can about growth, agriculture, those type of things. So um, I'm Marika Guy um, and we've got Aurelie and Chantal who will be talking later. Yeah, you can do that. Too, <laughs> okay, so I mentioned we're from the Royal Agricultural University and for those of you who don't know us, we're about half an hour down the road. We're in Cirencester. We have a very beautiful campus, which looks like this, um, and people are always welcome to come and visit us. We love to have people on site um, to show the campus off to and just to chat to. Um, as an institution, we're a small specialist, so we are small. We have about 1,200 students, um, but we've been around for about 170 years, sort of at the forefront of uh, education in agriculture. Um, so one of the academics was talking the other day and he was telling me that some uh, Augustus Volcker, who apparently discovered that potassium is really important in soil, was based at the university and other people who were connected with Darwin's um, sort of uh, theory of the evolution of species and, and that type of area. So we've had some really great discoveries happen there and it's been there for a long time. But it was a private institution for a long time. It's only the last sort of couple of years that we've moved more into sort of the public higher education area. Um, we deliver courses in lots of different areas um, from real estate to equine, animal behaviour. Um, it's a really great institution but digital is a relatively new thing for us. So um, yes. So as you can see there's the three of us here. Um, a little bit of background. Um, I started in November 2017. Prior to that we had not had a learning technologist at the university. Um, so there was a really fantastic IT team. Um, who were great at putting solutions out there, not quite so great at rolling those out and getting the academics on board. Um, and so things have changed quite radically. Um, I went to Alt last year and I spent a lot of time bleating on about being the only learning technologist and we've been lucky enough to get two more, so things are really looking up. Um, so we, have, we use various different systems, but obviously the main ones are Moodle and Wahara, we're going to talk to you about, um, also Turnitin, big one for us, Pronopto, we have a reading list software, Talis, that we use. We also have My Day, an app, um, and various other bits and pieces that we, we have um, at the site. And yeah, we, we actually we manage all of those. Well, I, basically, I am the learning technologist for the university. Um, Aurelie and Chantal have a slightly different role that they'll talk to you a little bit more about, maybe. But they, are, um, they have been brought in specifically to develop four blended learning courses. And these are part of the Catholic program and these are really great because it means that we can try out some really exciting new things in a space where um, our academics um, we can bring some of our sort of academics who are a bit more enthusiastic about these areas on board um, and they can get involved in that because some of our academics are um, slightly more traditional and not so used to, to technology as I'm sure lots of yours are as well but um, so the catalyst program is a really great opportunity um, and we write about sort of what we're doing digitally um, on our blog, so do, do look that one up as well. Can okay. I only say Catalyst is not the same as Catalyst? Sorry, yes. <laughs> Catalyst, <laughs> from Catalyst IT, who, uh, yes. But all good things are always called Catalyst. <laughs> okay, um, so um, when I started, we had Mahara, uh, and it was integrated with Moodle. But um, in the same way as a lot of systems um, at VRE, unfortunately, it was not used at all. Um, it was set up there. I think one or two students had had a look at it, and one academic had really done some great stuff with it, but that was it. No one really talked about it. Um, it wasn't used in assessment in any way. Um, it wasn't kind of part of, um, of any sort of program or curricula um, in any way. So um, when we started on the Catalyst program, um, sort of so semi before Aurelie and Chantal started, we had a look at whether this was the system we really wanted to go with. Um, so we looked at Pathrite, we also looked at Pebblepad, and we got people in to talk from those places, and we undenied about whether we should buy a different system 
And then, probably mainly because we employed Aurelie, who was very enthusiastic about Mahara, we suddenly thought, actually, we have a system set up, and it works, and other institutions are using it, so why don't we just carry on with what we've got and make what we've got better and actually start using it a lot more. Um, so I mentioned the academic who's already using it. So um, this is one of our really great academics called Karen Real Rivera, and she um, was using it completely in isolation by herself, just going ahead and using it with students. And as you can see there, um, she, I have to read what she said. Um, yeah, so she, she was getting people to create a portfolio of evidence um, in, in some, one of the courses that she was running. And she said she really enjoyed it because it was allowing um, the students to explore and interact with various sources, um, be more didactic with their information, engage further through discussion. She was doing this completely in isolation. Um, and she was having a really great success, but this wasn't filtering through to any of the rest of the institution at all. Um, I just put her concerns about plagiarism checking. Interesting, because I know that we talked about plagiarism checking this morning, and it is a really, it's a very, an area of dis for discussion, but this is, um, because we have Turnitin integrated, this is something that our academics worry about. But thinking about doing assessment dif differently is, um, is kind of a quite a radical thing at our institution and thinking about how you can find a sort of more authentic assessment approaches and actually make things um, not necessarily have to use turn it in as plagiarism checker. Anyway, orally. I think we're next. Oh, sorry, no, last one. Um, <laughs> just, just to say, we had, um, just sorry, just before we started Aurelie's training sessions that she'll talk to you about, we, are, we told some of the academics about it, and we had this comment, I won't read it out to you, um, but it was from one of the academics. Um, so there were some really negative perceptions of Mahara, and I think this probably goes for a, for a lot of people out there. People are using Mahara, and they're not being supported, and they don't really know how to use it and they were having to use it on some sort of um, course that they were on. They just didn't want to use Mahara. So not only were we starting from a, a situation where people weren't using it, we were, we were starting with a situation where people actually really disliked it, actively disliked it, and didn't want to use it at all. Okay. <clears throat> so when I started and I, we looked at, if we, we were still looking at different systems and then we decided to, to go for Mahara, the first thing we, we wanted to do is to have a better perception of Mahara. So in improving that perception, uh, which is, um, as Marika said, quite hard because you have to not only just develop something, you have to turn some people around as well. Their perceptions come from a very genuine dislike of a tool that they've been forced to use for an assessment that didn't need Mahara in, a, in the first place. Uh, funnily enough, it's for CPD purposes that Lisa, Lisa was saying that they're trying to make uh, start using it for. But it always comes down to support and guidance and what people need to be using the tool for rather than just using the tool for the sake of it. So we want to change that perception and make Mahara a tool that's an option for them to use for specific activities, um, either to replace an activity that's not working well uh, at the moment or to have a new activity or assessment in there. Uh, we want to improve the guidance and support, that's what we'd, we'd like to achieve. Um, improve teaching and learning um, overall using your portfolios for, I've just mentioned, learning activities, We've got dissertation management, uh, apprenticeship, it's a big aspiration because we haven't started there, we've had conversations, uh, we're based uh, learning management and increased focus on skills and reflections as well. And obviously alongside this, the technical um, side, making sure we have a note to date Mahara, because when we started, we went from, um, I think it was, what was it, 1704 to, <laughs> or something, to um, uh, 1504 even, to uh, 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 made it upgraded this year to 1804, uh, with some issues with PHP, but we got over that. <laughs> um, so we want, uh, for that, we need the, the right um, soil here, so we've got to assess uh, the soil and so that we have we find out the, the the options we have to make things grow and give the soil what it needs uh, so first of all it's things like upgrading the platform um, resources uh, and creating support so the training is part of that we're trying to develop we've started developing a training program for academic staff um, promoting Mahara and its uses uh, using the catalyst project that we're working on as a, a stem 
you see the analogy again, <laughs> <laughs> to grow uh, um, a good, a good, more good practice from, and also uh, examples, because staff really need examples of good practice, or maybe n just practice in general, so they can improve and get inspired. Um, and making sure we've got uh, plugins that help uh, them using it um, in a uh, either integrated way, seamless way. And I've heard about a couple of really either new features or plugins today that I'm really excited about and I'd like to, to look at as well in that respect. Um, and then we've got to add water and sun, basically. So uh, we're looking at um, doing uh, more training and support, and part of that is an induction with badging. Thank you, Sam. Sam? <laughs> so if anybody wants to use induction for Mahara for staff and students, it's a 30-minute activity they can do in their own time or in a classroom. There's a ready-made one that's fully um, um, shareable that Cranfield University are using. That's where we started it. Uh, um, DCU are using and we are now using and it's a page that they can work through and we can reuse and customize that page and create a badge to give to the students as well or to the staff. Um, I've actually run that last week for the first time uh, with a bunch of staff and I gave the badges but I also had some Mahara stickers for those that didn't want just a digital badge. <laughs> We're transitioning slowly. Um, then staff training, so from May to September we're running a few sessions. I'll, I'll get them on the next slide for you so you get an idea of what we're training them uh, with. Um, um, we having on Thursday Sam from Catalyst IT to uh, have a consultation with us to see how we can develop things forwards as well. Uh, we're creating guides uh, for Mahara on, uh, on Gateway, which is our Moodle, um, as well as in Mahara. And uh, we're looking at dissertation management package for the Catalyst course that we're developing. So then that could be reused in any other courses uh, for dissertation management. Again, inspired by what Sam did at Cranfield University. And then, um, uh, so that's, these are the training sessions that we're delivering so far. We've run the, uh, the first one, so basically what's the portfolios, introducing Mahara basic editing. So I'm rerunning this one in July because it was demand for it and people really want to do it. Uh, interest, in, interestingly, uh, half of the people attending, probably more than half the session last week on this, were actually uh, students who are using, no, student staff who are using Mahara for their PGCAP courses, uh, their educa PG education courses, and they actually wanted it for their own use. Uh, so that was good. Uh, next week I'm, learn I'm, I'm running the designing learning activities and assessment and using groups. It's quite a lot in one session, but we'll look at uh, basically based on what Sam did uh, uh, with me last year at the Mahudo about designing a, an assessment for uh, a learning activity for ePortfolio, getting a, a staff to generate ideas on what they can use ePortfolios for. Uh, then we'll have uh, using competency frameworks, which I need to get up to date with before I deliver that. Um, the station management, which I'm okay with, and um, I really want our staff to understand how that can help them and, and get rid of a lot of emails everywhere. And then uh, Mahara as a CV builder, uh, and I'm probably looking into, at that stage, maybe doing additional things for work placements as well, etc. Um, and this is um, uh, Jessica uh, Stokes, Dr. Jessica Stokes, uh, who actually is doing her PG cap here at the University of Gloucester. Uh, but she's one of our uh, staff, and she said that using uh, Mahara to create an e-portfolio for her own purpose um, has helped her uh, for to understand how the students will feel as well and how to use the skills. Uh, for when she's starting to deliver on the Catalyst project next year. So getting the staff to use uh, ePortfolio for their own purpose and understanding how it works is one, reassuring them, but also um, helping them understand what the students will, will, will feel like. Um, yeah, to get um, staff to actually use Mahara, we actually need to promote it because a lot of our um, staff and students don't actually know it's there. So the way we're planning to do that is the weekly tell tip. So those are kind of like mini newsletter that Mar Marika sends out every Friday. And it's basically instruct short instructions on how to do something. So we're going to implement Mahara through basically telling students and staff, or staff, only, yeah, staff only how to actually use it and what to use it for. 
Um, we're also promoting it through training. So the training sessions are also a way of actually promoting the system and how to use it. Um, academic use as a student. So a lot of our um, so academic staff are actually using Mahara for the PG CAP and implementation through the Catalyst project, which I'll talk about on the next slide. And the main thing is um, learning technologies discussion with academics. So our academics come to us to um, ask for advice on how to teach a certain subject or a certain topic and you know, using technology. And we're trying to um, advise them to actually use Mahara as much as possible where it makes sense for the teaching and learning actually. So it's also how to talk about it. Um, so our Catalyst project, I'll explain a bit about our Catalyst project. Um, our Catalyst, um, we're funded by the OFS and, what's this funding us? CCRI. C C and we're working with CCRI and UCM. So CCRI is actually based at Uni of Gloucester and UCM is um, a mainly a real estate university in Reading. And they're teaching everything online, so they're kind of like mentoring us on the Catalyst project. Um, we're developing two master's degrees, an MBA and an MSc, and then 90% online. There's um, only a few short residential weeks and the rest is all online. And we're, next year we'll be develop, also developing um, two undergraduate programs which will be largely online, then won't be all online. Um, yeah, we're using Mahara quite a bit on the Catalyst programs. So we're using it as a reflective portfolio for most of our modules. So because it's distance learning, we need to actually be able to monitor the students' progress. And we're doing that by basically having them um, reflect using Mahara on what they've learned, how they can apply it in their jobs or in their future jobs. And um, also reflecting on yeah, basically just what they've learned, how, how they pro progressed. Um, we're using it for dissertation management. So we've got um, a dissertation and an applied project. They can choose between the two. And using, we're using um, Mahara to basically monitor their progress with it and to communicate with their supervisor and any other teachers. Um, we've got a module on leadership and people skills and this is where we're really using Mahara heavily. So every time the students learn something, they go and reflect in Mahara on um, basically their own leadership skills, their own people skills and how they can improve it using, for example, action learning and then the other tools they're given um, in this module. Um, one of the modules has an e-portfolio as a summative assessment. So that's also, they need proper training, they need to use, know how to use Mahara to be able to actually submit their um, summative assessment. Um, and we're writing specifically for the Catalyst projects, we're making video guides and uh, PDF guides to actually train them how to use it because the students can't just come to the IT help desk because they're distance learning students. We're trying to give them as much as possible um, training on how to guys on how to actually use it. There will be a short residential sort of clinic run by Orly. So in week three and four, they'll actually come to our, um, come to our site for the residential and that's where they'll actually be given face-to-face -face training as well. Um, We'll also be setting exemplar activities for academic staff and also using the Catalyst um, activities as exemplars for academic staff outside of the project. So we're working quite closely with the academics on the Catalyst projects where they're, we're working we have a meet, weekly meeting with every module leader to actually write all the materials and we're advising them on how to do every single activity basically using technology. So we're ex actually putting the staff online as well. So we're the ones putting everything on Moodle and uh, Mahara. So that's all in me. Not <laughs> <laughs> you, you've got plenty of other stuff to do. <laughs> we do a lot um, of Yeah. <laughs> we're basically holding our academic staff in this uh, Catalyst project because everything's distance learning, which is quite different from what they used to. Um, and that's why um, we're making example our activities because we bring the techno technological skills. And we're trying to promote those as much as possible to the um, academic staff outside of the Catalyst project as well. And also we're creating mock-ups of activities, so just examples of what you can actually do with Mahara. Okay. Um, because we're quite new in implementing Mahara, we'd like to sort of use your experiences. Um, so based on what we've just said, everything we're doing to try and promote Mahara, 
what do you think, what else we can do and what would you do differently? So do you have any experiences with um, trying to implement Mahara? Did you find anything that didn't work? Did you find anything that worked really well? would like to know. Um, if you go to nearpod.com and type in PBIAC as the code, I would quite like to know um, any suggestions you have. Because we need it. <laughs> so has anyone implemented Mahara with distance learning courses before? Is anyone doing this at any institutions, yeah? I mean, Yeah, that would be great. She uses ePortfolio mainly with a reflective focus. Um, <coughs> uh, she's, she's now that can spread a little bit like the words magazine that can spread through across 10 different online programs now. Um, how much is summative and how much is formative, I can't give you a definitive on that. But I can tell you that the winner of our showcase competition this year was actually an ECU connected student um, studying philosophy. I mean, I think the idea of a competition in itself sounds like a really good idea, actually. So, how, how do you? So, the, is the competition just open to all your students? Yeah, through the All ECU Forum on Mahara, I just send out a, a standard email or note to everybody to invite them to contribute their portfolio, either one that they've developed during the year or they can create something brand new. Uh, because we did have some faculty members that didn't want their assessment for shared. Anyone else want to share anything? I know. Um, I'm happy to share with you in the break what we've done because mm. I was distant in the right. sense that we don't run our program, even as other countries run them. Yep. I'll show you what we've done to support those, those custom courses. That would be really interesting. Um, I know I was having a discussion with Ed earlier in the break. We were talking about, um, I don't know how you. But we were temp templates, but also we were talking about accounts and uh, lifelong accounts and how that fits in. Because some of the, yeah, I mean, a lot of the stuff we do is around uh, entrepreneurship, business, putting stuff out there for companies to see. And I mean, that's something we, we need to go back and discuss with, uh, with ITs, really, whether that's a possibility. It's that kind of idea of you can have this to uh, reflect and express and you can keep it going forward rather than just getting it stuck there. Um, is there anything coming up? Did you want to talk about anything here? Yeah, just Dan's idea about the thing on the floor from that um, <clears throat> uh, Having an H5 presentation or interactive video to template course so that users can engage with our delete and rebuild, so that's really good. Mm -hmm. um, one thing we have done as well, because we're doing not just Mahara, we've been doing a lot of Moodle and trying to improve things. We have invited Dan to uh, talk to us about Mahara, uh, about H5P as well, that's been really useful. Uh, oh dear. Um, Consider keeping assessment formative and developing for MPS. Yeah, that's a very good idea. So not running straight in formative assessment, but we don't have a choice of catalyst because uh, one of the modules <laughs> I've been helping developing is assessed via uh, a portfolio. Uh, so, but it will be small amounts, not the whole course. Um, so, um, showcasing portfolios. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've tried to do that to an extent, but I think they want that the difficulty with that for us is to build portfolios as mock-ups or that we can showcase that are relevant to their areas. Because I've been showing yours, <laughs> basically, and I've been showing those of the people I know are using them, been showing things for uh, from Cambridge Assessment, etc., from DCU. 
but they want things that they can relate to, mm. and that's quite difficult to, to build yeah, these, actually. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I know I went and had a look, for example, um, the Mahara portfolios, and I think Christina collates some somewhere, but I didn't find a huge amount that were really good, meaty stuff that I could inspire people with. So if anyone knows about... Ursula, yeah. Yeah, people well, yeah, who have stuff and put stuff us. out yeah. there. That would be really helpful. Yeah, and actually, it may be a suggestion to the uh, to the Mahara project to have a database somewhere where that we can search topics or something like that or types of portfolios, whatever it is, it would be really good. Actually, in the Mahara meetup today, um, we shared the page winners and portfolios. Mm, cool. We'll use that. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. But specific content portfolios. Yeah. And I think it's an, uh, also for us, if we come up with things and we see good examples, to be able to share them back. So I don't know, if we, did we talk about placements? Not much. No, not much. But I mean, that's definitely an area that I think lots of other institutions will be using it for. So diaries and writing diaries and reflecting on placements. Is, if anyone's got anything on that as well. Yeah, I've just, there's hope there to be yanked within six months, but we're in the process of designing a simple app um, for Yeah, that would definitely is something we'd be interested in. I was going to add um, that in the Mahara Global website, there's a more interesting stuff to brainstorm topics about people studying to get the results of those studies at regular hours. Yeah. Thank you very much, and we will share the slides with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.